morning, judges. We are Team Ruben Knight from River Valley High School. I'm Pao Tso. I'm Wen Qi. I'm Zhi Yang. And I'm Nathaniel. And today we will be presenting our engineering logbook to you guys. This is our team. We have specifically allocated these roles and positions to our strengths and weaknesses. Wen Qi is the leader. Pao Tso is the programmer. Zhi Yang is the constructor. And I am the programmer's assistant. These are the four parts that we will be going through. This is an overview of our journey. This is the process that we took. We started by understanding the mission. Then we thought of the logic and collection system, followed by build and program. Due to COVID-19, we were unable to meet each other face to face. Hence, we had to do it online through Zoom. During the Zoom call, we looked through the rules and took note of these things. We have to take these things into mind and build the robot. Now, I'll pass it on to Zia. Next, we will be bringing you through our journey of our construction of trial and error. This is a method that we use to debug the issues faced in construction by identifying and solving the problem. When we talk about the collection system, we identify possible solutions and find out some of the issues that we face. For example, the grab and lift method requires us to detect the ball then we can collect it. There are just many errors in this, such as false triggers and the ball is also too small to be detected. We saw a lot of goods doing the constantly turning mechanism, so we wanted to go out of our comfort zone and try something new. Then finalize and decide on the most efficient and effective solution, which is the rubber band method. This is the first robot design we came up with. This was a normal competition robot. However, we faced issues such as the sensors were too far away from the wheels, so the robot couldn't adjust accurately. So we decided to completely rebuild it. This is the second robot design. There's no space for collection, so we decided to rebuild it again. The wheels were also too wide apart and made the robot unstable. We eventually settled on this final robot design. Taking all of these issues in earlier versions in mind, we then improve our final robot based on these issues and problems. Now, I'll pass it on to Wen Qi. Moving on, we will be showing you on the aspects on how we improved our final, on our final design. Firstly, the light sensor placement has been improved a lot. Now, light sensors are placed very close to the wheels. This means that our robot can detect immediate changes of the line and adjust in time accordingly. Secondly, the wheels we are using are also thin wheels. This means will make our robot smaller in size, so it will be easier to get past the obstacles. Secondly, our robot also has a one-way lock so that the balls can be collected and can be lifted up together in the end. This mechanism allows balls to roll in but not roll out, and it allows us to sweep the area without using sensors or motors, thus, it's a, thus it is a very efficient method. Lastly, we also use infrared sensors to check for incoming obstacles to know what to avoid. Next, we'll be showing you the collection method of the robot. We actually got this idea from past experiences in the Tankaki uh, designing competition. We incorporated this real-life product into the robot. And through this whole process, we practice our ideation and innovation skills, and we learn how to mod modify and combine ideas together. Due to the new COVID restrictions, we are unable to go to school and record the videos. So we have some more videos to show you. This is the videos of our robot collecting balls in action. The rubber band cage is attached to a gear rack, which allows the cage to move up and down. This allows the balls to be collected into a cage and then lifted up. The second video features our robot sweeping in an area and in the end collecting anything on the ball. As you can see, the ball rolls into the robot and it is lifted up in the very end. Now I'll be passing the time on to Hao Okay, so now I'll bring you through the logic of our whole uh, program. So we see, after understanding, the, after understanding the rules and requirements by reading the rulebook together as a group, we thought of the logic needed, which is basically the line triggering component. So we created a flowchart manually by drawing it up on the whiteboard to help us visualize the different scenarios and possibilities that the robot might face when it is undergoing this mission. So we see this clears any doubts or misunderstandings on the mission. So this is the flowchart for the entire program. So we see how it works. We see the robot will start line tracking up there, line tracking until it sees the red line. This is this is when it knows that it's, it's entering the evacuation zone. Then it will sweep the area, rescue the hostages, victims, and then after that, exit. So this is the flowchart for the line tracking component. You see line tracks. As you can see, this is how it works. So I'll briefly, ex I'll briefly explain here, but then I'll explain in detail later on. So we converted the logic into code. And after that, in the next slides, I'll show you some of the examples of our code. So in this case, the logic, I mean, the robot was, there's two mean spots on both sides of the junctions. So the robot will have to U-turn. So in this case, this is this part of the logic, where the, 
like left sensor sense green, then like right sensor sense green, move forward, left check for left sensor sense black, then make a U-turn. So as you can see, in this case, in the video, the robot will check for green for both sides, then move forward and check for black before doing the intended action, which is basically this part of the flow chart. So next, this is the case of where of where the the green the green spots are on the other side of the junction. So now this is when the move forward and left sensor checking for black is important. So basically why we decided to do this is because it eliminates the case of this type of case. Because if if you if you remove it and we just say that up to this part, the robot will just if both sensors check for green and it's positive, the robot will just make a U-turn, which is not what we want. So now you can look at the video again. Instead of doing making a U-turn, because the robot didn't sense black, it senses white. Thus, the robot just continue line tracking. So now, I'll show you the other cases. So in this case, the robot is supposed to turn right because it's only one side of the line. One side of the green, green spot is only at one side of the line. You can see it will sense of green, then move for a sense of black before making a right turn. So now in this case, the robot is supposed to do the opposite, which is turn to the left. So the robot will move sense of green, move for a sense of black, then make a left turn. So now in this case, because there's no green spots on, on any side of the junction, the robot is just supposed to move forward, line track. Now, program part. So some of the some of the problems and solutions that we face. So what we did was basically we used the color block, RGB color block, which stands for red, green, and blue. Because in addition to the regular color sensor modes, which are reflector light, ambient light, and color mode, RGB color block supports raw value mode and RGB comparison mode. Basically, this ensures that we're able to track the this ensures that we're able to track the line better in our PD tracking, proportional differential. So basically, but when we use RGB block, we're able to sense for the green spots while being able to track the line efficiently. The problem with using normal line sensor light sensor block was that the robot was not able to track the line accurately and it kept going off track. This is because the robot had to keep switching between the two modes, reflector light and color mode. So thus the robot is not able to detect any immediate changes in the line and it led to inconsistent tracking. So now in the line tracking part, this is the line tracking component of our of our PD, PD tracking with RGB color mode. So on the left, this is a very huge curve line. And on the right, it's a right angled line. So we use these examples to test the tracking because on the left, it's a huge curve. And on the right, it's a 90 degree. So these lines are the hardest to track in the whole mission. Thus, if our robot can track these lines, we can track the other lines too. So now, we're talking about false triggers. So another problem that we faced was that robot sends green at random places. So what if you say, because this is then, if the robot sends green at random places, then it will cause the robot to do the wrong movements, which is not what we want. So what we did to tackle this problem was to add confirmation tests after the robot senses green. So after the robot senses green, it move forward for a bit, then check for green again. If it's positive, then the robot will do the intended movements ahead. So we also decrease the error range of the RGB block to ensure that this problem won't happen because the robot won't sense the green at random places anymore. So now we're passing the time over to 1T, but he'll be sharing with you more about the logic for sweeping. Due to our limited time to program, we did not have, we did not actually be able to carry out and test out this whole part. So we'll be only explaining our logic. So now we'll present to you the flowchart of our sweeping logic. This flowchart allows us to better summarize our idea so that we can program the sweeping logic easier. As you can see, this is a model of our play field. And these are the three entrances and the area that we need to sweep. So when a robot senses the entrance area, it will enter the, will move forward into the entrance zone. Then it will turn right 90 degrees and move forward until it senses a black line. This will mean that our robot is now at the corner of the sweeping area. Then it will turn, it will turn left 90 degrees so that it will be able to start the sweeping process. And now the sweeping process can begin. So this is our sweeping strategy. And our exit strategy will be that our robot can line track one round around the whole area and trying to find the color that is the exit strategy. And this means that uh, our robot will be able to detect the exit area for our robot to leave. If we have more time, we will be able to carry out this whole program, but we, due to our COVID restrictions, we are only able to get the logic out of this program. That's all for our presentation. Thank you.